My mother was an English teacher. And one of her favorite authors was Zora Neale Hurston, who wrote the book, Their Eyes Were Watching God. Then the book begins, ships at a distance have every man's wish on board. For some, they come in with the tide. For others, they sail forever on the horizon, never out of sight, never landing, until the watcher turns his head away in resignation, his dreams mocked to death by time. That is the life of men, and my mother would say, and of women. And the point was, two groups of people, those whose dreams are fulfilled, all of us, and then people who, for a lot of reasons, but particularly lack of education, never, never get the dream to be fulfilled. I would say what we do at UMBC, what I've worked on in my life is, how do we help people to dream about the possibilities and to fulfill their dreams? Dr. Bowski, when you first meet him, has this certain kind of confidence that's infectious. And he has a booming voice. And then also he has that personal touch and relationship. Dr. Herbowski embodies the principles of inclusive excellence and high expectations at every level and at everything he does. I think what motivates Freeman to do what he does is his very basic belief in equity for all and that we need to live our values. We need to seek truth. We need to be there for our students. And he has lived that his entire life. My students are always asking me about my experience in Birmingham as a child going to jail to march for our civil rights. Now is the time hearing Dr. King, and, and I have to tell them I was not a courageous kid. I was a, a nerdy, fat little nerdy math kid, all right? The only thing I ever attacked was a math problem, all right? And so I always say to them when they're thinking about doing something that's really seeming a little scary, that the courageous act doesn't come because somebody's so courageous, but because they have passion for the vision of what they're trying to do. From early years as a child of color growing up, my parents and my church and others said, you have to be twice as good because the world is not fair. Get over it. People with great privilege will continue to have great privilege. And if you're working class, low income or middle class, you may not get the advantage because you may not know the right people. And the only way you can be the best that's possible is to work really hard to be twice as good. Women have been told that, people of color have been told that, and I've always thought that way. And I say that to students of any background, regardless of race or gender, you want to be better than you thought you could be. Hi there. How's everybody? Good. Let me ask you all a question. Who's nervous today? Anybody nervous? Oh. When I say to people that UMBC, at its young age, has educated more African Americans who've gone on to complete MD-PhDs than any university in the history of our country, people go, what? But what do you plan to be doing? What do you think? I want to be an immigration lawyer, oh. um, so mm -hmm. um, specifically to the Asian American community. The program that people continue to talk about is the Meyerhoff Scholars Program. Robert Meyerhoff is a philanthropist. 30 years ago, he said, if we give young blacks the same opportunities that my kids have had, he said, all things are possible. And he was absolutely right. We were delighted. We were trying to find people who would help us to show, to prove that minority students could be in a predominantly white setting and still excel in science. Particularly being an African-American woman, I think the Meyerhoff program really allowed me to embrace being smart and made that the standard. I was part of a community and have been part of a community. I was well, actually the first Meyerhoff female to complete the MD-PhD program. Our passion together then helps to educate and foster the next generation, and that's really what Dr. Wabowski's kind of instilled in all of us. I've been working with the Meyerhoff students since the program began. At most institutions, people like me aren't used to seeing large numbers of high achieving minority students in positions of visibility. The Meyerhoff program has shown what we can expect from students who are historically been underrepresented in the sciences. 
Others now are replicating the Mahoff model. And we've now proven that it can be done at all types of institutions, including large publics. And the importance of that success is that it says to the scientific community that it can be done. I feel that UMBC is Freeman's body of work. And it is a beautiful university with a great culture of caring and support to all. This UCSF medal represents best in class. I don't take that for me personally so much. I take it as this is what we're working to be. We now have these young African Americans and people of all races on the faculties, of some of the best institutions in the country. It says what's possible at a middle class young university that's 60 years old, that you can, you don't have to be rich to be the best. I mean, who could imagine a little black kid from Birmingham being in this position? It's, it's an amazing American story. Not about me, but about what this country can do when children get an education. And I can go on and on with these young people around the country who are on faculty positions, starting companies. And so there's this cadre of about a thousand of them now. And what makes them such examples of dreams fulfilled is not just that they're excelling individually, but they really believe of those to whom much is given, much is required.